Okay. You see, going to school, learning concepts and everything is supposed to be like an additional, uh, additional light, so to speak, to navigate through the various complexities of life as you go along. It's not supposed to be a replacement or whatever it is that you have with you. Um, example of Patrice Lumumba, the Kenyan lawyer, it's uh, very apt in this circumstance. If you, there was a time he was being asked that, um, you know, these ideas that you have, why don't you become a politician, run for office, so that you can implement those ideas that you're talking about. And he said that uh, he tried to run for a legislative seat in rural Kenya. He campaigned responsibly. Uh, he didn't give anybody a penny. Stressed that uh, fact that uh, you know didn't give anybody a penny. And at the end of the day. The person that won the election came, gave all kinds of financial inducements to the people, <clears throat> and at the end of the day, the people voted for the other guy and they didn't vote for him. And his summation was, the African electorate does not respond to ideas. Now, there's, there are a lot of things wrong with that narrative. Because if today you have a Harvard Law degree, or you have a quality that you think uh, gives you an advantage over somebody else without those qualities in terms of vying for uh, political office from a rural community. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day whether the value that you the value that you have is real or not. It's a question of perception. So provided the locals that you are advocating for their votes do not recognize your quality as a value that translates into a benefit for them, then it's perfectly rational for them to make a decision on the basis of what makes sense to them. So if for any reason you have, uh, Harvard, uh, you have a Harvard Law Education and you have um, experience in the Western world, and you have a lot of technical competence that you're bringing to the job, it is your responsibility to educate and convince the people in that environment the reasons why the qualities that you have will make a difference in their own lives. But if for any reason you fail to communicate those ideas and raise their understanding for them to appreciate those qualities and the impact you could have on them, I think it's extremely disrespectful of your own people and your own heritage for you to make a submission that they don't respond to ideas because they do. Because the point is that provided you are able to convince the people in your environment that the qualities that you have will affect their bottom line and you've done your job. And you'll be surprised that despite the poverty in rural Africa, the people will vote according to what they believe. In my area, for example, I actively campaigned, uh, ran a lot of grassroots development programs and youth systems over a period of close to 10 years before we ran for the election. We went for the election, we did the best that we could, and we came third in the election. But it doesn't at all change my summation on the statement from uh, from uh, Lumumba before that point. Because what I understand is that in the same location where I campaigned, at least in three uh, in two previous election cycles, three previous election cycles for the presidential election in those areas, um, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of uh, inducement in terms of uh, vote buying and all these things. There was use of official force and all that you know apparatus by, of state yeah exactly and all calculated to prevent the population from voting for their preferred candidate for the presidential elections that's from 2003 2007 2011 and also 2015 for general Muhammadu Buhari. and despite the inducement despite official intimidation throughout those years the people they took the money and they voted for Buhari. So they've already exhibited an understanding that provided the value that you have with you is something that they appreciate and accept. On election day, they will collect the money and they will vote for what they believe in. So if we failed in communicating our quality, we failed in communicating our value to the point that the people will take the money and still make a decision on the basis of the qualities that they think we have, they've not done that. I think it's extremely wrong for us to push the responsibility back to the people because they are not equipped 
significantly to make a decision without you working very very hard to raise their thinking and their consciousness regarding what you're trying to achieve so the positives for us regardless of the fact we came third we didn't buy anybody's votes and we tried to run an absolute legitimate campaign we came third and uh, i think we were able to get about 20 percent of the total vote which translated to about 14,000 people so for me if 14,000 people in a rural area without an industry without any form of formal economy people living in the lowest level 14,000 people understood our message and actually voted on the basis of those ideas i'm certain in the next election cycle we'll be able to deepen the understanding of the people especially the younger ones and be able to do this things better for you to push forward so education should be seen as a functional reality not just like um, an empty or hollow certificate that acts like a license that or an access uh, like an access key that kind of gives you a license for you to get a job but it's not something which is embedded in you that you apply it in what you're doing you know why i understand your point well was why i was running for office the same thing happened yeah i realized i couldn't i couldn't match anybody i was running against financially mm. so i started telling them what a senator was supposed to do and that was the basis of my campaign and i was able to raise what i was behind sdp was third uh AP, apc was second pdp was first i was fourth out of 21. and i realized uh, someone my age not exposed not an indigenous person from fct could pull that much I know that by 2023, of course, with political experience of Ghana, I could probably push a higher priority, and which also, you know, puts the professor's statement, you know, a little bit of jeopardy, because I just felt I was just doing something, and next thing I noticed, that I had actually built a force, and that force was able to shake the very narrative that speaks to people do not think ideologically. I think they do, but you have to make the ideology. Relatively, that's where I think it's best. Yes. That brings us Absolutely. to the issue of competence when it comes to governance. We'll come, we'll be right back with you right after this quick commercial break.